To the nice part. We welcome Reverend John with his message of living truth this morning. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, and good morning again, family. And a warm Hello and greetings from beautiful Jamaica to all those who join us on the world, world Wide Web. I want to start with a story about a little boy who went with his mom to a restaurant and before beginning um, to eat, his mother said, asked him to bless the meal. In the mother's words, and I quote, as we bowed our heads, he said, God is good, God is great, Thank you for the food, and I would thank you even more if mom gets us ice cream for dessert. <laughs> Amen. Along with the laughter from the other customers nearby, a woman was heard to remark, that's what's wrong with this country. You see, you hear, you hear, you heard it. Kids don't even know today how to pray. Imagine asking God for ice cream. I never. Hearing this, the little boy bursts into tears, saying, Mommy, did I do it wrong? Is God, is, is God mad at me? As she held him and reassured him that he had done a terrific job and that God was certainly not mad at him, an elderly gentleman approached the table, winked at the child and said, In fact, I happen to know that God thought this was a great prayer. Really? The little boy said. Cross my heart, said the gentleman. And then, I have it on good authority that God loves ice cream. <laughs> and then in a theatrical whisper, turning his head towards the disapproving lady, he said, oh, too bad some of us don't ask God for ice cream. A little ice cream is good for the soul sometimes. <laughs> Naturally, the mother bought him an ice cream sundae at the end of the meal. The little boy stared at it for a moment and did something his mother will never forget. He picked up his dish, his ice cream sundae. He walked over to the table where the lady was sitting who had shown her disapproval, set it in front of her and said, a little ice cream is good for the soul sometimes, and my soul is okay. And so I've entitled my encouragement this morning, after prayer, what? Ice cream? Or if you prefer, beyond the amen of prayer. What happens after we pray? But before I share that with you, and before I get to the amen, or the and so it is, in the mornings when we pray, every morning in the, in the office at 10 o'clock, uh, whoever is here, the staff, of course, and myself, and whoever is visiting at the time, we pray together. We, we, we read a psalm or a passage of scripture, and we pray together. And every, we take turns. So I usually start off on a Monday morning, and then throughout the week, various members of staff pray. Well, when Marshall Lowe, who greeted you at the gate this morning, prays, and he always remembers everybody. He remembers champs, if champs are going on. He remembers the people who serve in the kitchen. He remembers the people who are... Um, serving in the book room. He really is amazing. He blesses everybody who has come into the contact. And those if he has heard anybody is not well, he blesses them too. And when he's finished, he says, and so it wonderfully is. <laughs> that wonderful? But before the amen, I wanted to share with you a, a story that I got from the, the Jesuit mystic Anthony, Father Anthony Dumello 
who described prayer by telling this story. He said, many, 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 many eons ago, a man discovered fire. And like most people who discover something that is good for humankind, he immediately went and taught uh, the, his tribe's people how to make fire. And they were, of course, very grateful because you know, the, the winters would now be warmer and they could burn the meat that they had caught and that would help to keep it a little longer and so on and so forth. But before they could tell him thank you, he dashed off up into the mountains to teach another tribe how to make fire. You know, you notice that when people bring a wonderful message or have a wonderful gift to give to humankind, they don't stay around waiting for thanks. They're not interested in the approbation and the glory. They just want to share the gift. So he didn't wait around to be thanked by his tribespeople. He left and he went up into the mountains where he taught the people up there to make fire. But they were really just thrilled and amazed. And so what they did was they built a great temple to honor him. And over the high altar, they placed his picture. And on the altar itself, they placed the tools for making fire. And they venerated him and the tools and the idea. But nobody made any fire. <laughs> there was no fire. There was just veneration and praise. So what is prayer? My friends, prayer is the fire. And I want you to, to just bear this in mind today as we, as we share, because you, as we know in, the, in this teaching, yes, the words we speak are placed into the subconscious mind and, and they're planted there where the subconscious can work on them. But it is the fire, it is the feeling, it is the passion it is our conviction to which the universe responds. Am I right or am I right? So the fire is what the prayer really is all about. You know, one Sunday, a dear congregant met me outside and she said, she gave me such a big compliment, it really stayed in my heart. She said, where do you get the energy? You know, I can feel you all the way from where I'm sitting. And I felt so good because, you know, friends, when I have to face you on a Sunday morning, I get up at four and I light that fire. I fan the embers of love that burn on the altar of my heart into a blaze divine so that when I stand before you, I want you to also catch a spark. To you. I don't want you to say, Lord, I should stay home and watch Joel, whatever Steenie is, um, you know, because that service never have no fire. So, the fire stands before you, and if you meet me after service, I'll show you my socks. They're ablaze. <laughs> so, after the fire, what? Now, if you're like me, I think many of us uh, um, will relate to this. We were taught to take it to the Lord in prayer. Sounds familiar? We were taught by our elders and our caregivers, are you whatever and heavy laden? Take it, take your troubles to the Lord in prayer. What a mistake. The worst thing you could do is take your troubles to the law in prayer. Why? The way the law works is whatever you plant into it, thank you very much, it's the way, it's what you get. So take your troubles to the Lord in prayer and you're going to get more trouble. If you take your joy, if you take your, your passion for what you have to do in life, if you take your deep belief in the healing power that is within each and every cell of each and every body, take that to the Lord in prayer and say, yes, and God, now trust me, and just if you don't take away anything else today, take this away, God always says yes do you believe that yes. let me not believe hear you yes <laughs> do you believe that god always says yes? yes ah so our part is to get into the yes consciousness and stay there 
So let us affirm together, in God there is an eternal and ever ready yes. Together. In God there is an eternal and ever ready yes. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our Great Truth Movement, said, and I quote, change your thinking, change your life. That's the, the title of the workshop that Reverend Anne and Carol Charlton do at the Women's Institution and that Reverend Michael and I do at the Men's Institution on Tower Street. Change your thinking, change your life. Which reminds me of a husband who said to his wife one morning, darling, I've changed my mind. To which the exasperated wife said, I'm glad I hope the new one works better. <laughs> you see, God has already done all that needs to be done, my friends, for you to live your life in what I call a victorious state of fulfillment. Just remember that. He created you, it created you, in the image and likeness of all that is good and all that is holy and all that is joyous and all that is perfect and endowed you with the possibilities of the kingdom of God that is within you. So what you need to do now is believe it. Jesus the way shower said in John 13 verse 17 and I quote, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. End of that scripture. So when you say Amen, or so it is, or so it wonderfully is. The next step is to act as if you believe that what you have affirmed is the truth. I think of an iceberg, you know, there's just a third of it above the surface, you know, and that's what we say, you know. Oh yes, I believe this and God answers prayer. And then beneath the surface, there's two thirds of that iceberg that's saying, <laughs> you are telling you, no, puss and dog now have the same look. And Boy, you know, may always know if you hear it, if you want good, your nose must run. And uh, I never got a good, a good break in life, so, you know, this doesn't apply to me. Those are the deeply held beliefs below, while we're the third above is saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. So we have to work on that piece below the surface. And that's where prayer comes in. Because when you pray with passion, and affirm that the truth of your being really is way deep, deep down where you can't even see the bottom, is that God has just implanted in you the good, the joy, the love, the health, the harmony. All that you require is already provided. And God is saying, yes, yes, yes. yes. So there's a little confusion amongst us truth, truth students concerning this off-coated fountain to treat and move your feet. And we spoke a little about it two Sundays ago. The phrase, by the way, actually originated with the Quakers. I don't know if you knew that. Who affirm, and I quote, when you pray, move your feet, unquote. Which I find interesting, since one of the Quakers' practices, and it's a central practice, is to sit in the silence until they are moved to speak. In chapter two of the Ernest Holmes papers, which is titled The Healing Light, Holmes writes, and I quote, I listen to the silence until it speaks. Wow. I listen to the silence until it speaks. So, you know, silence isn't the absence of sound. Silence is the absence of your ego chattering in your ear all the time, telling you what it thinks you need to know. Silence is the absence of self and the opening of the little self and opening up to the big self in which that still small voice can really direct you and tell you when to move and when to hold, when to speak and when to shut up your mouth and say nothing. Father Anthony de Mello, the Jesuit mystic, gives a joke about a pious man who had served God all his life. This is about treating and moving your feet or doing nothing. He had really just been such a good man and he had never asked God for anything. And so he was about to retire and realizing that the fixed income wasn't necessarily going to be able to manage the escalating cost of living, he said, God, 
I never ask you for anything. I serve you year after year. Um, I've, I've never come to you with a request. So just this one, I'm going to beg you. Beg you, make me win the lottery now. <laughs> I think he said it with more fire. Make me win the lottery. I think he may have made a mistake and said, oh, I can't manage. So what does the law respond to? You don't think you can manage? Well, see it here, you can't manage. Anyway, he prayed fervently. And a week passed, lottery draw, nothing, don't hear anything. Two weeks, a month, two months, three months, Eventually, a whole year had passed. And in exasperation, he says, Oh, God, give me a break. And out of the silence thundered the voice, Oh, man, give me a break. Buy a ticket, no? So two Sundays ago, um, Shamalin Shaw and I spoke to you about waiting on the Lord. And she gave her a very interesting Hebrew word, kava, spelled Q-A-V-A-H, which literally means to bind together. Thank you, Shamalin. That was just, is she? I saw her earlier. That's just sparkler. Wonderful, wonderful. Did you hear her? Yes. Give her a hand. Right. Kava to bind together. So when you wait on the Lord, it means you must integrate yourself with the potential power of your own spiritual nature. That's what waiting means. Get your energy and your vibration in sync with the universal vibration that always says yes, yes to everything that you really believe. And so, you know, friends, the vision of our center, and in fact, the vision of all centers for spiritual living worldwide, is awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence, creating a world that works for everyone. St. Paul also said, and I quote, Awake thou that sleepest, that Christ will shine upon you. And when he talked about Christ shining upon you, please, he couldn't have meant Jesus, the man walking the streets of, of Nazareth. He was talking about the Christ that is your sonship and your daughtership with Almighty God. You are the Christ by virtue of the fact that God created you in its image and likeness. So wake up from this belief that you are nothing and not worthy and awaken to the magnificence of your own being so that you can let that Christ light, that fire on the altar of your own heart blaze into such a blaze that all the world and everyone you, you encounter is warmed in your presence, is uplifted, is touched into wholeness. People will sit beside you in the, in the traffic if you are driving or on the, in public transportation if you're on a bus. People will be in the line behind you at the supermarket and they will heal and not even know that it was being in your presence, in the presence of the fire that is the fire of your soul, which touched them into wholeness, which made them feel good about their own humanity, which allowed them to look beyond the little vicissitudes of life that we think, oh, I can't manage. And instead of making altars to the messenger, we can live the life that God intended us to live, each of us a Christ walking the earth and blessing our fellow humans. And so that vision of awakening humanity to all, to its spiritual magnificence, really is something we're going to be talking a lot about in the coming months. And we are going to be, be just looking at how we as a spiritual community can take that sense of, and so it is, the truth of our being, the truth about Jamaica, the truth about the entire world, the truth about all humankind, that there is perfect God, perfect 
human, perfect life kind, perfect expression. Is that a mission or is that a vision or is that just a way to be or not? Yes. Yes. I love the yes. And so your assignment this week is a simple one. First of all, have a scoop of ice cream. <laughs> it's good for the soul sometimes. And one scoop won't quench the fire. But your real assignment, should you decide to undertake it this week, is don't just rush into your day after you say your prayers. Give yourself just three additional minutes to just sit in silence. Close your eyes, because when your physical eyes are closed, you open your inner eyes. And it enables you to see from the highest point of view, from the highest vibration of your godness, your goodness, and the truth that is at the center of your own being. It takes discipline because I know you have the children's lunch to pack, or there's stuff to do, and there is people to see, and places to go, and things to achieve. Stop. Look within. I was going to make a sign, stop, look, and listen. Remember those railway signs? And just listen to in the silence. Just listen. Just listen for that. That still small voice that is always present. Maybe today it's saying, I really love you. Maybe today it's saying, let go of your anger. It no longer serves you. Maybe it's saying, today is the day you must forgive. Today is the day that you must say yes to the God presence and forgive everything and everyone that needs to be forgiven. Maybe today is the day when that still small voice says, and you know, forgive yourself. It said to me one time, you're a damn idiot, just stop the foolishness. It speaks to me in Patwa a lot. <laughs> and I said, what you say? Run it past me again. You're not easy. Me not pre that God. But listen within just for three minutes this week after you pray. And I'm assuming that everybody within the sound of my voice doesn't leave home without prayer. If it's even just, oh God, guide, guide me and pilot me today. Even a sentence of prayer, friends, it's so important to light the fire that the universe will say, here is a light unto the world. Glory be to God. And will say yes to everything your heart embraces, everything your heart believes, everything your heart de de declares. And so just, just allow yourself to experience the beauty and the wholeness and the joy of being in the silence. If you're demonstrating the symptoms of illness, begin to visualize yourself as strong, capable, and healthy. If you are sad, begin to visualize yourself as radiantly happy and joyful. In fact, let's try a little exercise right now, just for a moment. Just gently close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And take three deep centering breaths. Just breathe in at your own pace three times and out. And now call to mind a time in your life when you felt vibrantly alive, healthy, and filled with the joy of living. Can you do that? Just call to mind a time in your life when you felt just so vibrantly pulsating with the life of God. Feel the health and strength of God. Feel the purity of God. Feel the love of God. Feel the joy of God filling your heart with every breath. Mm -hmm. 
Breathe in God, my friends, and see yourself radiantly alive. And now, with your eyes still closed, affirm out loud, in my flesh, I see God. In my flesh, I see God. Just stay with that for a moment. And when you really feel it, and you're quite ready, just say yes, and gently open your eyes. Yes. And you know what some of you are going to say? I open my hand, I still have the headache. Or the condition is still there and the overdraft is still at the bank. It's a fact. Of course it's a fact, my friends. But it is not the truth. Facts and truth are entirely different things, as you know. The truth is what a thing can be. Truth is the reality, and as a reality, is always present beyond the facts. The truth is that every cell in your body can be healthy. If you believe that, say yes. yes. The truth is that financial freedom is yours by divine right of being. If you believe that, say yes. yes. The truth is that the soulmate you are looking for is looking for you. You believe that? Yes. <laughs> the truth is that we belong to a thriving spiritual community that is transforming lives and making a difference in the world. If you believe that, say yes. 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 So you see, friends, the truth is that God is always present as that which you require to fulfill your divine assignment on the planet. And when you see this clearly, your seeing will reveal to the honor and glory of God the truth that you ignite with the fire of your belief and the passion of your knowing that God is the only presence and the only power in your life, in my life, in our lives, and in the lives of, and affairs of all humanity. You know, Nehemiah undertook the daunting task of rebuilding the walls and the city of Jerusalem. And according to the story, the surrounding tribes did everything in their power to divert Nehemiah from his self-appointed task because they wanted to prevent the wall from being completed. And so they cooked up a ruse to have him come to the plains of Ono for a meeting where, of course, they would, they would um, do him in. They would slay him. But picture this. Nehemiah standing tall upon the wall of Jerusalem, and the wall of Jerusalem is a symbol of prayer and peace, proclaiming with all the fire in his heart, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. And you see if you feel sick today? And you see if you feel down today? And you see if you feel broke today? And you see if you feel whatever you feel today? Say to that feeling with all the fire in your belly, I am doing a great work. Say it with me. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. So after prayer what you do? Eric Butterworth gives the answer. Discipline yourself to maintain the transcendent perspective and keep yourself in a state of perpetual trust in the spiritual process. Just keep yourself in a, a state of trust that God is doing what God does and God, God has no choice but to do it because God a God and is saying yes to your every desire. And so if you agree that you're we're doing a great work and cannot come down, say a resounding yes for me. Yes! And I believe it. God bless you and namaste.